My name's Phil Coffey, I'm from Coffee Architects, and our proposal for the Public Space Charter is to banish BS 5489. The implicit requirement for the night to be the day, we take two key positions. One, an obvious one, that the nighttime isn't the daytime. The second, that civicness is in the small things. Civicness is about respect for each other and for our environment, picking up litter, no feet on train seats, and in the context of today's uh, conversation, warm light, um, an atmosphere and beauty. Um, the smallest of things are detrimental to civicness, and I'm talking about LEDs, light emitting diodes, or they evoke a less, in, or less enjoyment of darkness. Khan talked about people being drawn to light. He also said, a library starts by taking a book to light. Public, states, public space starts by taking people to light. The quantity of that light, the composition of that light, and the color temperature of that light is incredibly important. We used to care about light. Um, people used to walk around these lamp lighters around London, lighting all, all the lamps in London, beautiful, warm glow as you came through the city. People still do it. There are 1,500 of them um, looking after our streets at night. We used to hold design competitions for lights along the front here, the dolphin lamps that look beautiful at night, and, but also their composition and their temperature was considered in the evening. And of course, some of the, my most memorable moments, at least our wonderful social interaction taking place in incredible light, and Lumiere from last weekend is a very clear example of that. We like Louis Kahn in the office, so we've got another one here. We are born of light. We only know the world as it is evoked by light. In the daytime, we see forms and masses, and at nighttime, we see points, we see contours, we see traces, and we have to consider carefully our nighttime context. That's us. I don't know whether you see beauty or you see waste, um, but really that light isn't going anywhere important. Um, and as you come back um, down into Europe, that beautiful place that we all know, um, you can see northern Italy, uh, Paris and Britain, um, Glasgow, my hometown Manchester, London. They all look like supernovas, you know, this bright white light in the middle, with this wonderful glow around it. There's the city. Zone one is bright light, bright white. Um, and around it, zone two and zone three, a little bit more yellow. The suggestion is somehow uh, the suburbs must be less safe than the center of the city because they don't need this, this incredibly bright light. If you were just thinking about light, I'm not sure you'd want to spend too long in Canary Wharf. Um, neon blue kind of blinding you as you wander the streets. So these are the little things that make the difference. A lovely bulb and the light emitting diode. So this is the light temperature chart. We managed uh, throughout centuries to deal with 1900 Kelvin, the candle. Um, daytime is 10,000. Now we're kind of forced through 5489 to be at 4,000 to 4,500 Kelvin, um, which is like half the day. Um, not quite sure we need that amount of light. In fact, the American Medical Association are kind of ahead of the uh, curve, and they consider LED light temperatures to bring discomfort, glare, Lack of uh, safety in terms of vision for driving, walking at night, sleeping less, and feeling worse. Not a great uh, sales pitch. Um, this is the circadian rhythm chart of a normal person. It looks slightly different for an architect. Um, but you can see here where it goes up and down, where you have lunch, um, and during the evening when, when it's peaceful. And this is how uh, light affects that. Uh, you can see what really important things like bowel movement is likely at half past eight as the sun rises and you work through best coordination at half past two um, and then bowel movement again later, which we won't be together for. Um, as you can see, natural circadian rhythm at the bottom, as we add more light, um, we get to a potential danger zone where our bodies just don't know what to do with themselves. This is secured by design based on BS5489. Uh, safety is paramount, um, we understand that, but are we institutionalizing and sterilizing light, creating this panopticon design where everybody has to be watched? Isn't there a question about atmosphere and mood and the, and the resulting civicness? People can be trusted in beautiful places, perhaps we need more of them. Do we really need a blue car in the daytime to look like a blue car at night? I think we might be over-egging the safety. And so uh, back to America, they've actually said, well, let's not have any street lighting uh, greater than 3,000 Kelvin. And indeed, uh, in, uh, just in California, in a place called Davis, they changed the street lights from this wonderful warm yellow to a bright white. And the residents took a stand and forced them to put it back the way it was before.
So I can understand we can't banish entirely 5489 because it's important for safety, but we propose a serious reconsideration of BS 5489 and a move towards the American Medical Association's guidelines, and you can't say much about following America these days, but maybe on this one, uh, towards an equitable balance, light that engenders civicness and its inherent safety rather than light that is purely for safety's sake. Thank you.